So I will transfer you my energy. I will transfer my karma. Here is my karma on you. Please record. Connecting boom. the cloud server. And boom, we're here. We are here. We're live. We're ready for it. Are you ready for it? Oh, are you yeah. ready for it? Oh, yeah. Are you ready for it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Episode eight. My laptop's working. I told you it took the battery out. It's working now, of course. But it's a good thing. I'm a expert at fixing things now, which is sweet. That can solve most things problems in the world just by taking the battery out most things that are operated by battery except for except for a car you know what's our battery um ooh. i know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell it's got to be sustenance right like some type of sustenance like food or water that's their battery or is that the fuel I don't know. I think that's the fuel. That's probably like the fuel. glucose and um, uh, I guess the heart. Yeah, the heart because when the heart stops, you die. Hello, everybody. I'm wearing a Captain America shirt. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's up, guys? This is John. And this is Shane. Welcome to episode eight of Question Talk Podcast, coming at you live from Quarantine Central. Um, fucking sucks. I heard today that uh, Connecticut is declaring um, a continuation of the uh, lockdown until May 20th. Ooh. Yeah. So if that's anything like, if that's what's coming down the pike for us, then that's, that kind of blows. Well, I heard the apex for New York was, I think, this weekend. So hopefully things start going downhill from there. But I think it's, I don't know, maybe it's coming down south, I think. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think, I think that the people down south and, like, who aren't around major... Uh, Metropolitan areas. Yeah, are just taking their time. You know, I bet, I bet a bunch of people have it and don't even know it, which is the problem because people will just keep spreading it without knowing it and people will keep dying. Yeah. yeah that sucks i watched this video of these people in the, the any uh a brooklyn hospital it's pretty crazy i'll have to send you the link but it was basically this journalist just following around this doctor in the in the hospital it was only a short video but it was like the their hospital beds in the hallway um they were moving people from like from hospital buses between hospitals um you know, they were, it was pretty crazy. What's that? What do you got there? I got a hammer. Is that how you're going to fix things? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just fixed, it was in my uh, little thing for my screwdriver. I have a hammer. Mm, okay. It's so powerful when you have tools in your hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. But if I, you have only certain tools though, because I feel like if I had a hammer, yeah, for sure. If I had like a, a water pail, not very, I'm not feeling very powerful with that. <laughs> a water pail or like um, like a gardening tool and those little tiny shovels. Because eh. someone has a fucking hammer, you know, or even a sledgehammer. Ever, have you ever chopped wood before? I used to all the time because we had a wood like stove. Sick, right? Never. So I got suspended in middle school for cussing out my band teacher and hitting a kid. <laughs> so my punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so my punishment was three days of manual work with my grandfather, and we just chopped wood the whole time for three days. Damn, oh, that's so awesome. That, that's such a grandpa thing to do. Yeah. That's cool. Chopping wood is kind of fun, though. Um, no, it's not when it. Well, I guess when it's not. It like is punishment. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because then it's just punishment, and that sucks. Yeah. And the worst is where my mom lives. So we growing up, we had the wood stove, but our wood pile was at the bottom of the hill, and it was a pretty big hill. So I had literally would go down the hill. Me and my brother would get. When we were, I was young, so I'd get like one or two or three things of wood, go up the hill, go back down the hill. Because we had a we had another thing right outside underneath our deck. We had our wood storage, but that was just so we could you know quickly get it. Yeah. But when it was running low, we'd have to go down to the big pile down to the bottom of the hill. Since we lived right at the, the edge of the uh, of the woods, we would just get our wood from dead trees. So we would just take the tractor, pull it out, and split it. Because uh, we had a wood splitter. Mm. Um, you know what that, that is? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just – it runs on – what the heck is that called? Hydraulics. So you just, you know – forward back and it would just split everything so it was was so quick though but yeah so cutting wood chopping wood carrying wood grew up with that yeah we went i took this blacksmith class in uh where the fuck were we something down at south in uh virginia and um gloucester gloucester county whatever uh, we took a blacksmith class, me, Joe, my cousin, and his uh, wife. So, like, recently? Yeah, like, a couple months ago. And um, it was fucking sweet. All you fucking need for that is a big-ass furnace. Like a forge. Yeah. And then you get a big anvil, which is, and like, a hammer. Yeah, like four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, and then you could just you just bang on shit and then move it. Like we made we made key I think there were keychains and then like a beer opener, and then something else. Um, but it was pretty sweet, and that's another thing where you can just pound away all day, and just you know feel real good about yourself. You know, just feel really really good about yourself. You know, deep down. Do you know what? Um... <laughs> Damascus, like a Damascus blade is. Damascus steel. Yeah, uh, what is that? So you get, um, I forget what type of steel it is, but essentially you get the steel and you fold it and then you yeah. keep folding it and folding it and folding it. So it has like hundreds of layers. And when it comes out, the blade looks super cool. Go ahead and Google like a katana because I want to get a katana. I want to get a Damascus katana. And look how cool the blade looks. It's just Damascus, Damascus sword or katana, and look at the blade itself. It's not like a smooth. It has a whole bunch of like different like waves and stuff like that. It's super cool. I got really into the show on History Channel. Um, what's that called? Uh, so for those of you tuning in ooh. on YouTube. Benefit of subscribing to our YouTube channel is that we're going to talk about something that you guys can't see for another couple seconds. Okay, so yeah, um, you see the one little pattern right there, the one on eBay. Uh, right there, the, right the mask. Yeah, so it's kind of like that. Um, it has the cool little patterns in it. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. That's pretty cool. That's not that. That's not that bad either. Is no. it? Really, is it? Like, is there such a thing as a real sword? You know what I mean? Like, is it? Like, is it just steel? Does it have to be have a certain other element to it to make it like real? You know what I mean? Um. Well, if you're talking, so for katanas, they're actually Japan obviously had the samurai and stuff, and after the war. Um, United States soldiers took a lot of the katanas home with uh, them. So those swords are super expensive. Yeah. Um, but if you go to Japan and ask for one, it's very difficult because they're like, well, the United States already has a bunch of our swords, so why would we? <laughs> but the ones I want, they actually make them now. That really, I mean, the technology now is way better than back then. So they make the steel better and it's cheaper. So I just kind of want one just to have one. Um, eventually I would like to have a legit one from, you know, back, back in the day, but Dude. those things are thousands and thousands of dollars. 
you're gonna this is gonna blow your mind but i was thinking the same thing like last week i was like i want a fucking sword i started looking them up and i was like these are pretty sweet i was looking at like bronze broad swords like i because i watched this video uh, about david goggins and this guy cameron haynes and cameron haynes, they're both ultra marathon runners and cameron haynes is a bow hunter and he was saying that it's fuck. He had all these old bows in his like basement man cave area, and they were like from like Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan. Uh, and he said that they had like 160 pound bows, which is which isn't the size of the bow for you. You don't know it's not the it's not the weight of the bow, but it's how much tension is in the band to pull back. And it's wow. just nuts. The 160 pound bow, ride it on the back of a horse just murking people that's what they said that's why king is con conquered so well i believe he was the one who it was on like horseback in the bow and arrow and it changed everything yeah it fucked people up mongols could you could you imagine inventing something for example like the the gun where it's like the bullet and it's like oh my gosh we don't have to fight hand to hand anymore we can shoot these people like the weaponry, like the first person who realized that they could not use a stick, but use something harder than a stick, like steel. Like, oh, wow, this works way better. Now, now the people have just invented, we have invented a way that you don't have to even shoot people. We'll just fire this giant bomb at them from hundreds of miles away. <laughs> and and we'll, we'll probably never even see the damage that it causes. Isn't that nuts? Nuts! Well, the funny thing, well, not funny thing, but the crazy thing is the the atomic bombs we dropped on Japan, that was almost 100, that was 80 years ago. So think of the technology that we should have now. Oh, we definitely do. Oh, yeah, it's way yeah. better. Yeah, that's crazy. So I would, we want a sword because we want, yeah. if we get a house, we want a at least one room Japanese style. That'd be sick. Dude, yeah, I'm I'm all about the swords. That's also why I want to continue with the blacksmith thing, because I can make my own fucking sword. And you can come over, we can pound away on our metal together with our hammers, with our shirts. Forged and fire. Forged and fire is the his have you ever seen it on the history channel? Yeah, the, the blacksmith that I was at, he was on that show and he was on right. his other show and he made like this on the Discovery Channel, he made this steel crossbow. Oh, uh, okay. Like, yeah. He won. Nice. I forgot what the show is called, but he was on Forge and Fire too, I think. I used to watch that all the time. It was so interesting to me. It's still on. I think I've either seen every episode though. Or... <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I binge watch these shows and I get like super into them and I, I can't stop watching. It's, it's bad. Mm. It's bad, especially if I get hooked. Yeah, it's, I haven't been hooked on a TV show in a while. I just get, I don't really like sitting down for that long. I don't know. Too much other stuff on my mind. Just haven't done it. We watched a. Uh, did we watch this what movie? Did we watch the other night? Man, it's so hard to remember shit. Not it's for all, me. Yeah. Gem and I are watching all the Marvel movies. Oh, sick. We're on the eighth or ninth one of twenty-ish. It's either you mean, twenty. Yeah. yeah, you're talking like Ant Man, not not the Avengers, right? Yeah. Okay. No, that's a that's why. Well, no, but I, but but I just to clarify, some people think Marvel movies are just the Avengers. Oh yeah, so the first one was Captain America. Then I googled the in what order you should watch it in, and if you want to do it in chronological order. It's not the time when each movie came out because like the second Captain one. Captain America is first, right? I thought. Yeah, but then Captain Marvel was second. But Captain Marvel was one of the newer movies. Yeah. It came yeah. out like 2019, but we watched that second. And then it was Iron Man and Thor and Incredible Hulk. So yeah. I think. I think Thor, the second Thor, is the next one we watch. We want to watch, but we were. We were thinking that, you know what, we're in quarantine. We've got nothing else to do at 9 o'clock at night. Um, we've been watching them sometimes from like 11 to 1 in the morning. We're like, what, what? are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> that's awesome. We watched, that's what we watched last night, Thor Ragnarok. 
that was on TV. That's a okay. funny one. Yeah, it's it's kind of underrated. Yeah. All right, should we get into our topics for today? Uh, so on the agenda, we have uh, supplements, which is my research topic. And then Shane researched the game dominoes, which are played with dominoes. So um, do you want to play rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first? <laughs> so for those who don't get that joke, I am in a rock, paper, scissors tournament via Zoom. Um, and I was having some audio technical difficulties, but the video was working. So John couldn't hear me but he could see me doing rock paper scissors and he had no idea what i was doing <laughs> yeah i thought he was i thought he was playing me in rock paper scissors and we we're going back and forth and <clears throat> couldn't tell who was winning and he kept going so fast and then i called him and he hung up and i was like what the fuck like why are you so adamant about playing rock paper scissors with me <laughs> without any audio it was, so <laughs> it was funny but okay uh, let's do it best two out three uh, no, let's just do a one. It's bad radio. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wait, wait. I, uh, wait, no, wait miss ready? Fire. Miss fire. All right. Ready? ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I see it. I saw it. I saw that. It was paper, and I have scissors. Deuces. Um, all right. So tell me about the game of dominoes. It was actually kind of interesting. So... The only reason I know well, about dominoes, so I used to not realize it was a game. I just thought it was kind of a bag of dominoes growing up. Okay. Um, but then I saw it, I believe I saw dominoes. It was either a TV show or on ESPN or something. They had a dominoes tournament. It was four players. And I was like, oh, that is actually a game. I had no idea. <laughs> so I still don't really know how to play it. Um, and even after Googling it, it's still a little confusing to me. I think it's one of those things where if you just play with somebody who knows what they're doing, um, they can show you. But there's different ways to play. There's a way that you can play where it's, you know, one versus one. Um, the standard way right now is 2v2. Um and there's different ways to score. There's, there's a game where you can block, and depending on if you block, I'm depend. So let's say I block you, yeah. and you can't make any more moves. Then the number of, uh, I think they're called pips, the little, mm -hmm. little dots, the dots. Yeah. On the domino, how many left in your hand is the amount of points that the other team gets. But then there's also also a, a scoring game and a draw game. So I had no idea there was so many different games. And the one thing I didn't know was, um, so there is a domino for each possible roll of the die. So you have you have two dice, mm -hmm. and you roll it. So every combination. So if you roll six six. That's 12. So there's one domino that has a six and a six. There's one domino that has, you know, like a two and a three. And then there's the blank one. So even though that doesn't have an actual face, that's just an extra. I don't know why. But there's 28 to coincide with pretty much every possible outcome of a roll of the dice. So. Interesting. Is there a Domino's World Series? Probably. There's gotta be there's a World Series for everything. Yeah. Domino's yeah. like a fun game. We played it when I was younger. It's like one of those games that <clears throat> totally forgot how to play though. Until you said that and it reminded me. I just the one thing I remember is let's say I put down double six as the two sixes on each side. Then you're supposed to connect another domino that has a six to one of the one of the sides mm -hmm. so it's a connecting game so mm -hmm. that you have to have a domino with a corresponding pip count in order to continue that's how Got i it. it 
Follow the rules, motherfucker. So, do you know what the little tiles are called? The domino tiles? They're also known as... Bones. Bones. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, I guess in the the beginning of the game... Right? Right? So at the beginning of the game, you kind of just shuffle all the dominoes in the middle. Yeah. Which is called the... The pile. Boneyard. 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 Nice. Then you pick from the boneyard. That's how you get your your dominoes. Cool. Um, And dominoes goes back to ancient China. Like China makes all the games. <laughs> it's just been around longer. Yeah. Ch- chess, I'm pretty sure, was or invented in China. Go was invented in China. I'm pretty sure Checkers was too. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like most of those ancient games were. Well, they have Chinese Checkers, so I don't think that. But that Chinese Checkers is different than Checkers. Chinese yeah. Checkers is like more complicated. Checkers is just fucking. It is what it is. You know, fortune cookies were invented in America. Yeah, the whole like notion of Chinese food in America is bullshit. Um, I love it. Yeah, but it is. It was created. General, General, here we go. This is something that people say differently all the time. Yeah. You're going to get Chinese food. I always get General blank chicken. So's. Okay. What do you? What do you? That's say? all I say. General so chicken. To Zhao. To Zhao. Yeah, yeah. Some people say stuff like that. I, I, yeah. never know the, I say general so's chicken. Yeah, I say so. Some some people give it a, a nice sow. General sow. Like well, no, no. Just say it normally. General so's. General to sow to z's. I think I've I've definitely been with someone who's said that. Like I don't. What is this? It sounds really good, but I can't. Those to so? to to z. <laughs> it is but basically all the chinese food dishes are like the same thing except for like one or two different ingredients like orange chicken it's the same thing it's just a different sauce than like i don't know whatever else like chicken fried or you know good for you know i'll order it i i'll order it day in day out eat it till i can't eat it anymore for sure But we talk about dominoes. <laughs> dominoes. Uh, oh, so my my question for you about dominoes is uh, a trick question because it doesn't have anything to do with dominoes, but everything to do with dominoes. Pizza. Oh. Uh, so my first job was at Domino's. Was that your first job at like, Shepherd? Basically, I had this marketing intern internship when I was in high school. But so my, yeah, my first job was at Shepherdstown Domino's in the college. The college I remember that. that we went to. Yeah. Um, good times there. Crazy. The whole, the whole, the whole th- frat was Domino's yeah, workers. Yep, yeah, pretty much. It was. Uh, I mean, it was run by like meth heads. So it was, <laughs> it was insane sometimes um so yeah so that was my first job and what was your first job and can you tell us a little bit more about it oh my first job was at family recreation park it was a miniature golf slash driving range slash batting cage (laughs) arcade that's mini golf um arcade um the, the, uh, go-karts wow and what was this? huh where was it boonsboro slash hagerstown i've never heard i've never heard of this yeah so it was, it was really cool um bosses were bosses were awesome um and i went to school with their kids they had Let's see. Jane has, I think, three or four kids. And Jean has like four kids, so they all have different ranges. But I went to school with one of them. Uh, 
who graduated with me, Marcus. So we all pretty much worked with them and it, they hired only high school kids pretty much. Mm-hmm. So they could pay them, you know, minimum wage. And I mean, batting cage, you just sit there and go, Hey, here's your helmet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or yeah, miniature, wow. golf, miniature golf. Hey, it's going to be six bucks to play. You know, it's not no. that difficult. But I worked there for four or five years, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's so it was awesome. That is that is pretty cool. That makes total sense that your first job was at a place like that. <laughs> I kind of wish it wasn't. Looking back, I was like, man, I should have been a carpenter or something so I could have some real skills instead of, <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's your putter. <laughs> right. Yeah. At least you got paid. Yeah. But with it was it was fun. Anymore. What'd you say? Said with money that's not real anymore. Yeah. Just keep printing the shit out of it. Oh no, we're in trouble. Just just hit the button. Hit print. Speaking of printers, I got a new printer. I'm pretty excited about it. That's good. Do you have a printer? We had a printer, but it was really old and it hit kicked the bucket. So we got a new one and it scans. So we have a printer as well. Jokes on that old printer for not scanning. Printers are clutch yeah yeah they're, they're, out of all of like office equipment printers are probably the most clutch yeah because it can be a fax machine it can be yeah a printer um <laughs> and usually usually yeah, usually when you print something you're you need that to be printed you know what i mean you don't just print something to have it printed so it's a it's a it's a functional piece of the office. That and then your chair is probably second. It's crazy that people still need paper documents like wet with uh, wet signatures instead yeah. of you know something like a DocuSign or something like that. I know it pisses me off. I just had to print out two of the same form to fill out, then scan in and then email. I was like, why can't I just fill this out on the computer? You know what I mean? Silly. Cool. All right. So, uh, my turn supplements. Supplements are good. Uh, not all supplements are good. Um, it's been a wild ride for supplements in general. You know, they, uh, had some tough times with the FDA food and drug administration, the primary regulator for supplements. Um, been doing it for a long time. Back in the 1800s, uh, the manufacturers of these supplements would just go straight to the doctors and then they would tell them, Hey, this, uh, you know, he grows, he cures, uh, hepatitis or your toothache. And they believe them and they buy them and they give them people. That's like toad oil and stuff, right? Yeah, it was bad. It wasn't wasn't good. And then they started cracking down on supplements and said that uh, it has to be particular, uh, especially botanicals. So people would grow these plants, um, and that has been you know part of medicine going back hundreds of thousands of years. You know, people have used plants and other herbs to heal ailments when medicine fails. So they kind of uh, they had a little bit more leeway for the herbologist because what they were growing was considered a food and supplements aren't considered food. They're just either, it's like, it's just a, it's either like a vitamin. It's a certain amount of vitamin. Um, it's like a, uh, metabolic, you know, rate increaser. Uh, you know, it's something that's not considered a full meal. So all of these different, and, and, and when you're considered a food, you can't have additives added to the food. You have to be grown like pretty much by the code that the FDA puts in place. So when people were trying to in, <clears throat> enhance their supplements, they weren't able to because they can't add anything to the supplement. The supplement has to be just what it's labeled as. It's approved by the FDA, but with um, botanicals, people who grew that they 
can add things to their food to make it better. So it's like, this is super kale. What's happening? What is that? I was wondering where your lamp went when I was talking. It just, <laughs> um, and uh, they then, um, you're throwing me off. <laughs> No one can see you doing that. You know that, right? Because you're not talking. Oh, the video's yeah. not on you, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. Let me just talk for a little bit so people can see what I'm doing. Hello, world. <laughs> so supplements were uh, under some strict enforcement. And nowadays, it's good to double check your supplements uh, because even with all of the restrictions in place from the FDA in 1994, they really opened up this, the Clintons really opened up the can't whoop ass. And they said that uh, in terms of new dietary supplements, you can only have a new dietary supplement when you uh, use something what that hasn't been in a food previously and when you haven't um it hasn't been used in uh, another supplement before so that's considered a new dietary supplement and then there is a um there is a time when they uh forgot um oh yeah so yeah, so you file with the if you file with the FDA in terms of your new supplement, um, the uh, you can't add any new supplements. You only have to use mixtures. So you can you, people can say that they don't have any new dietary supplements, but they can mix previously used supplements together, and they don't have to get tested by the FDA. So, uh, okay. So be careful with your shit. So you're like really fucking distracting the shit out of me doing that shit with your hair, little ass. <laughs> no one can even fucking see what you're doing. So what's your stupid question? Well, so I, I don't know if it's really a question, but it was more, do you think that eventually we will go to almost a full like a fully supplemental diet where you're only going to be eating, you know, little pills or something to get all of your vitamins and vegetables or, or your vitamins and nutrients. Yeah. I think that that's already kind of happening that with AI, they have this, they're talking about having this thing that you swallow and it lives inside of you and then it monitors what. Oh, like the vitamins. nanites or whatever they're called. The, um, yeah, I saw that. They, it's what are they called? It's nano something, right? Uh, I don't really know what it's called, but nano sounds right. It's, it's small, but it's like nanobytes or something like that. Sounds right, but um, yeah, and then I'll just tell you what you're you're lacking, and then you take another thing, and then you're good to go. So I don't know if I, I don't know. I doubt. I highly doubt that everyone would just switch from taking from eating food. There's too many people who are in like the restaurant business, you know, all these, you know, foodies. So. But I could definitely see you taking something like that or like doing one of those like like what uh, diabetes, like pricks, you know what I mean? And then having – like I would actually – I would do that. It's kind of like that yeah. whoop band. Have you seen that? No. Whoop, W-H-O-O-P. It's, a, it's like a bracelet. It's a cloth bracelet that has a microchip in it, and it doesn't track your fitness. It tracks your recovery, which is pretty interesting to me. So it monitors you while you sleep and everything. So it tells you what your strain on the day is. So like how much you've, how much, how much you've done, how, what your heart rate's at, you know, how long it was at that particular point. And then it monitors your sleep to tell you how much you've actually recovered based off of your vitals while you're sleeping. That's so cool. I think, that's, I think that stuff's pretty interesting. Yeah. It kind of goes along with like what you're talking about last episode with like sports science and there's how much stuff is like is out there in the science world that can be applied to everyday life that you don't really think about it until it's like crosses over because it's just so 
you know, it just happens every day for you. And then all of a sudden someone else realizes it. And then it's like, boom, this is, we can just make this better. And then they invent it. And it's kind of like that guy was his name, like Oscar Pistorius. I think he was from South Africa. He lost both his legs and he was, he had those mechanical legs and he was running so oh, fast yeah. that they banned it because it was giving an unfair advantage. It was one of those things it's like, oh my gosh, that, I mean, yeah. it makes sense when you think about it because it was essentially like, like a spring. Right, right, yeah. And, and muscles fatigue because muscles get lactic acid build up and that's why your, your muscles break down. Mm-hmm. So the faster you run, the more lactic acid build up, the tired you get. So he wasn't having that problem because it's just metal and it's a spring. So he was just crushing it and then they came up and said hey you know this is unfair (laughs) so i think we as humans will somehow morph into like an android type thing i think we're going to have a mixture of where we're going to have to be almost mechanical to survive eventually especially if we want to go to space to live because there's no way that we're going to be able to live because, you know, muscles and stuff atrophy. So I just think that we will become more, I guess what's that biomechanical as a species in, in the future, because there's going to be so much use for it. Like, Hey, do you want LASIK or do you want these eyes that you can see like an Eagle and you'll never have to, you know, if it starts going bad, you'll, you'll get a tune-up. Right. Yeah, oh, hey, your knees hurt? Well, let's just get you fake knees that work way better, and you'll never have knee pain ever again. Right. All this stuff will cost so much money, though. Yeah. But it's available, which is cool, which I like, because everything costs a shit ton of money when it first starts. Yeah. As long as it starts, eventually – um, now, I heard this cool thing the other day about Tesla and how their progression of their products. So they pretty much the business model is that they started out with this super fucking nice car. And they were a sports car brand, a high end luxury cars. And then they got really successful doing that and then pivoted to a more manageable, like more affordable car, a slightly more affordable car. That was a huge success. And now they've transitioned into a much, much, much more affordable car that more people can use. And it's better for the environment. And And we don't, yeah, we don't really know. I mean, the production numbers are down because no one's fucking buying cars. But um, they say that the, the new car that they just modeled or displayed is showing a lot of interest. So I think that was pretty cool. You know, did you see the truck that he showed? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that looks ridiculous. I think if I think that was more of a shock value. I think he's gonna fine tune that again. And the one thing about Tesla I like is they so there's a company that reverse engineers everything. Um, so they'll get the brand new vehicles, they'll get brand new like anything invention wise, and they reverse engineer it and they find out how it can be improved. So let's say you build a car, right? You send it to these guys, they reverse engineer it, and they go, oh, hey, it looks like your trunk has 53 parts. Well, Toyota uses this technology and it's only seven parts. It's more cost efficient, it's easier to build, it'll save you time and money. So they did that apparently with one of the first Tesla models and I don't know if it was like a chassis or something, but one part was so many different pieces and they're like, Hey, your car's awesome. Except for this, it doesn't make sense how you're doing it. So then they got a newer model and it's way better. Oh, really? <clears throat> Interesting. I think that's people- what you have to do. I feel like you should always, if you're a business, you always have to, you know, self-reflect and you should always hire, you know, a company or somebody to come and look, Hey, this is our process. Can you take a look at it? And somebody comes and goes, Oh, why are you doing it this way? And if it's, Hey, I do it this way because of this. 
oh, okay. Or if it's why well, you just always do it that way. <laughs> well, because that's how it is. It, I hate that. This is me off when it goes. When you go, hey, why do we do it this way? Oh, it's because that's how we always do it. Well, why don't we do it this way? Right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Can we start doing it that way? No. <laughs> I know, because people are too lazy and they don't want to change their routine. Yeah. That's what's a problem with where I work now. It's just like there's all these fucking – damn boomers <laughs> who are stuck in their ways i mean that's not true they aren't stuck in their ways but when it comes to the processes at work there are definitely much more efficient ways to go about it with the technology we have now but guess who doesn't understand the technology fucking uh stupid stupid people you know what i mean <laughs> My thing is too, if I'm technology is going to advance the order we get. My thing is if I'm working in the industry where I use technology, when I'm 60 years old, I'm going to learn that technology because it's going to help me. So that's one thing that drives me crazy about some of these, you know, people that complain like, Oh, like all this stuff's taking jobs away. It's like, well, yeah, but it's making our lives way easier. Right. I, I get it. You know, like the trucking industry apparently is going to be gone in like the next 50 years because cars can drive themselves now. Mm -hmm. um, so trucks are going to literally be able to drive themselves. So it's like, why, A, why are we going to have, why are we going to pay somebody to drive a car when you can have a software go and drive itself? Um, so that that's going to take jobs away. But it's like, well, yeah, but you know what? those that software is going to fail a lot less than somebody who just got off a 12 hour shift. They're only allowed to drive like certain, they can't drive more than a certain amount of time each day. That's just recent though. Is it really? I didn't know. Yeah, but, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. to think about like rules now that like weren't always there at the beginning. You know what I mean? It's like, why, really? There were years that we just didn't monitor this. <laughs> like, we're just, Billy Bob is fucking sucking down Michelob Ultras in the back, getting his, getting his man boobs rubbed by some hooker in Cincinnati. And you're telling me that we're just now checking up on that? Damn, America. Do better. So it's, it's one of those things, too, where there's people that go and find and laws that are still in place in certain towns and counties and states and that people you know they just don't care they don't think about but there's some that's like oh hey you can still you can still shoot somebody if they step one foot on your property right it's like little things like that or it's like hey you can you can only have you can only own five chickens but if you own six it's fine it's it's yeah, there's so many yeah. little laws like that. It's, but nobody thinks about it until it happens, and then they're like, "Oh, well, this law has been in effect for 200 years. I guess I guess we should update yeah. it." That's one of the things that we, I think we talked about the Constitution. I don't know how we haven't updated that thing. Right. Like the last thing I can remember is, what, like maybe like civil rights stuff. Like. Yeah, women. What was the women can vote? Eighteenth Amendment was women's votes. I think. I think it's up to twenty something now, but it's yeah. it's a little tweaks when. Dude, they're gonna have like Facebook and like like stuff in there. If they were did it now, they would absolutely mention like social media in the Constitution. You think? They should. They should include. They should include a bunch of stuff. They. They should go every single year, every X amount of years, and look at the Constitution and go, hey, what should we change? What should we, you how know? Many, how often did you say? Like every year, every four years, every five years. <laughs> they should, like they should, it should be fluid. It should just be fluid. Yeah, you can't make that many changes, though, because nothing ever – would never see fruition on most of the things that you were implementing. Well, that's because the people voting on it suck. <laughs> well, like most of the things in the Constitution are like rights. Yeah. So it's like you like, yeah, like from the, from birth until now, I haven't had to, you know, I, I, uh, enact my right to bear arms. But but tomorrow, maybe I will. 
But if we change the rules now, then I want to be able to. You know what I mean? Well, that's like that. when I think they should come out and say, hey, you can own guns, but you can only – can only have a clip that holds 12. You can only have a gun that, I don't know, shoots these type of bullets. Like, there's there's no reason anybody should have, you know, like tank piercing or armor piercing bullets at their home. But it <laughs> is everyone's right. I don't know if they'll be able to have that. But I they, they should know. be able to. They should be able to say, like, hey, you're not allowed to own Maybe like, this like, type of weapon. Like, hey, you can own a gun, but there should, I think, I live in a household where we have, literally have a gun room where mm-hmm. we can make, make ammunition. We have a crap load of guns. But my thing is, should I own a uh, you know, semi-automatic rifle? Probably not. If I do, if I am allowed, I should have... I don't know, some restriction on maybe the bullets. They and I think and I think guns should so you have to be registered to have a gun, but I, I think you should constantly have to like scan your gun in. You know how our license we have to get a new driver's license every like six or seven years? Yeah. I think you should have to like almost re register your weapon. That way you can't say, Oh, I got this gun x amount of years ago i don't know where it is now it's like well it's you have to know where it is or you should put like a missing gun like hey i don't know where my gun is well i think I yeah i yeah i think that they should just say that uh well like in the case of school shootings they were su- proposing this idea that if the kid took your gun into the school and shot a bunch of people you would be held responsible. Like the owner of the gun would also be held responsible. You know That's what I mean? tough, though. That's tough. Because let's say what? Let's say you have a let's say you have a gun safe, right? Okay. And your son figures it out, figures out the combo, and gets it. Yeah. It's gonna be zero. There's no way you're gonna know unless you go and check. But guess what? Let's say you go to work, and he figures it out that morning and takes it while you're at work. How stupid do you have to be to to give away your gun safe combo? Well, I do have to say That's why it's for a... those combos, it's left 100, right 100. I know my stepdad's, one of his locks, he keeps the thing in what, one of his drawers. What if, it, what if it's, it's so ridiculous? What if it's not the turn thing? What if it's just the pin pad? Well, then he might be able to figure it out because guess what? But it's, when's, your, when's your birthday? Oh, you know what? That's going to be my my thing. And he goes down and goes, oh, my dad's birthday's this. Maybe I'll try this. Oh, it opens okay, up. Well, then, yeah, then I think you're an idiot and you should still be held responsible <laughs> because you couldn't be, you, you didn't, you weren't responsible enough to safely store your guns away from someone, from anybody. I think that's a, you know I think that's a gray area. I don't know. I think it was interesting because I think that it holds some value because you obviously should be held responsible to some degree for being careless with your firearms. And that's well, and if you can't be held, if you can't show that you have the responsibility to take care of the guns then you shouldn't be able to get the gun in the first place. So here I'm going to play devil's advocate. What if your son or daughter steals your car keys, takes your car out, hits and kills somebody should you be held responsible it's not that's different no i'm just saying it it's why is that different because it's not a loaded weapon it's not a weapon it could be a weapon but there's more car accidents people die from car accidents more every year than guns yeah but your your argument isn't it's not it's not an argument whether that you use something that it's owned by someone else and whether you're responsible for it. It's an argument about whether you use a loaded weapon, a gun. It's well, that's what we're car could be a weapon. But we're specifically talking about guns and the Second Amendment. Oh, well, I know. I'm just I was just playing. That was yeah. That. But but you can't. You're just playing with something that doesn't make any sense. So if you're going to play devil's advocate, it makes try. sense. It yeah. makes sense. But but the car the car doesn't resonate. Because it's a car. It's the same thing as if, if that would just be if 
whoever wasn't on the insurance would held responsible. The gun is, is it is, you have to take care of the gun to ensure other people's safety. The same thing with driving. But if someone uses your gun that you have locked away, then you should be on the hook for that. I might disagree. Okay. Why? I just think to an extent, yes. But in those cases where it's like, hey, literally, he stole it from me, there's there's nothing really I could do that. I mean, if it's one of those things where you're just careless and you have it in your, you don't have it stored away, you have it in like the top drawer and something happens and maybe, but you know, if the person goes to the extent to break into something to steal it, I think that's different. It, different how? I'm just saying, let, let's say you have it properly stored away and then your son goes in and, and figures out the combo and takes out the safe. Well, I don't think you did your part. You properly stored it. He but just you, figured you it out. Yeah, but you didn't because you, you ha- didn't have the right security around the thing. Just because you put it away, out of sight doesn't mean that it's safe. Well, you can say that it's the anything. same thing. Yeah, oh. but it, yeah, but it's the same thing. Okay, so you one night you forget to lock the safe, and then your son goes in, takes it out, and then shoots a bunch of people. That's different. Himself. That's different. <laughs> that was he forgot to lock it. But if he locked it, he locked it with a combination that was f- easily enough to figure out by his son. Well, let's say it wasn't easy to figure out, and he just figured it out anyway because he's smart. It's just the same thing with like computer hacking. Let's say you have a kid that learns how to hack and steals credit card information same yeah. thing okay yeah you, well, should, you shouldn't you shouldn't have you shouldn't have the uh, breaking the law on different degrees doesn't mean that it's the same thing We're talking about specific gun mishandling and school shootings compared to hacking it's different because it's just the internet you know what i mean i could use i could use my computer and if i was a good enough hacker i could just you i could use your vpn or your ip address and it would look like you doing it, but you can't. You can't take a gun, copy it, and get another gun. <laughs> and then well, say would that you yours. would you hold me accountable then for having my VPN access easy for you to hack or get into? No, so because that's same, that's that's where I'm kind of talking. Like, how are you going to punish the person for? Like, I I keep my computer safe. I don't know how you got my VPN, but if it looks like it's coming for me, I shouldn't be charged because it, I didn't do it. Right. But it's not, but it's, it's different because it's still the person doing it. Do you know what I mean? So if you take a gun, you go into, if they take your gun, they go into the school and they shoot people. And then it comes back that the son cracked into your safe yeah, I don't think I should be held accountable. That's crazy. Yeah, I think you should because you own the gun and you didn't take care of it enough. So you should be held somewhat responsible. I'm not saying that you go to jail for murder, um, but I think that you need to be... Fined or something? Okay. I, yeah. That makes sense. But I don't think you should be like, oh, hey, you're you're a part of this you go to jail i don't think that it's yeah i don't think that i think the i think where our miscommunication is is the word accountable i think that how being held accountable it can be different and i think that Uh i don't think they should be held you know face charges but i think that there should be something that comes back to the owner of the gun you know unless unless it was stolen by someone else you know if someone breaks into your house and steals the gun you know what you can do but if it's someone who lives within the house and knows where the gun is and knows how easily accessible it was, then I think that you should probably have your license revoked or maybe, you know, something else okay. for a year. Yeah. Okay, I could, I could get, that makes more sense. Because I thought you were saying like, hey, you know, this guy, he's going to have to go to jail. It's like, well, he didn't yeah. kill anybody. That's crazy. I know, that's why I didn't understand your car reference. Because that was, that's not even, I mean, you can't I was even, taking it to the yeah. extreme. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't even, like, it's so, yeah, it was, it's, such a different type of thinking that I couldn't even wrap my mind around it. 
my mind, man. <laughs> By this thing around my head, cutting off the circulation. <laughs> my hair, man, it's just getting. Dude, yeah. Getting so much, I can't handle it. I know. I kind of like. I kind of want a headband now. This is gems. Nice. Looks pretty good. You get Rock it. You get like different uh, patterns on it. Get like uh, I'm gonna have to have, talk to my friend C Vargs. Shout out Chad Vargo, <laughs> headband gang. Headband gang. He would always wear headbands in college soccer, and it was just one of those things like, God damn it. C Vargs <laughs> is the man. Blacked. Gonna get blacked at Altos tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's hilarious. All right, is that it? I think I've got. I think we have anything else. Oh, we're finally on uh, iTunes. All episodes on iTunes. So that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as always, hit us up on Instagram, Question Talk, Twitter, Question Talk Pod. Our YouTube channel is up. And start subscribing to our crap, you know. Hit that subscribe button one or two times. On the Three. YouTube, on the YouTube, is it? Can you see both of us at the same time, or is it the same thing? Whoever talks. Whoever talks. Okay, that's fine. So I, that will give me an opportunity, you know, like maybe pick my nose or something while you're talking. Yeah. Or one, of show episodes, my... one of the episodes, I just pick my nose on camera. So. Okay. I'll get yeah. Have some decency, man. <laughs> yeah, all this is gonna come back and bite me, and like three years when we're rich and famous it's putting our handprints on the Hollywood walk of fame. So I was thinking about that too. You know how when your grandparents were growing up, they had maybe one or two pictures of them as a kid. Wait, what? When your grandparents were young, yeah. they didn't have many pictures. Nope. But nope. us, yeah, they could, almost see everything we've ever done ever for sure yeah did you, hey, you want to see what you, you want to see what your grandfather did when he was 16 <laughs> yeah, yeah i wonder if, dude, i wonder if like snapchat would like come out with a, like a movie about all of your fucking snapchats for like a certain uh, amount of time that would be gosh. oh my god man dude, that would it. be that would be a fucking trip yeah i would hate it too Oh my god! Some of the stuff it would be cringe. I would cringe the whole time. Hopefully, oh, man. Especially hopefully kids. Hopefully kids re just remember like, oh, you know what? Eh, everybody does it. Who cares? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, man. This is fun. All right, dude. Episode eight in the books, and that's it for question talk. Signing off. Say bye, Shane. Uh, sing my song. And that's the way it was. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Boom. Bye.